yung uh, halabas na yun kung mahilig kayo sa mga ibon. Siguro baka mag-enjoy kayo. Pero kami hindi na namin tinapos. Marami nga ang ano eh, uh, umaalis. Kasi siguro na board sila. Kasi konti lang yung nilabas nila mga ibon. Yung madada, yung ano lang, yung hindi masyadong na-train. Yung na-train lang ata doon masyado. Yung isa, yung kanina yung kumakanta at saka yung lumilipa. Yung pinapalipad nila. Tapos pinapapunta nila sa kabilang corner. Tapos palipat ng ganun. So, siguro na-board yung ibang tao. Nahihingal ako. So, siguro na-board yung ibang tao. Kaya umaalis sila. Hindi nila tinatapos yung Uh, show. Kasi ang show hanggang ano siya, 25 minutes. Hindi na namin siya tinapos. Siguro nag-stay lang kami doon ng 15 minutes ata. 20 minutes lang tayo doon man, no? So, kaya ngayon lilipat na kami ng safari. Okay, guys. So, dito na kami sa safari. Wild trick uh, safari. 35 minutes lang naman yung waiting. So, hindi masyado matagal. Kita niyo ba yung pila? So, dito na kami sa loob. And, ayan yung pila niya. Paikot-ikot din yun siya. And, nakikita niyo ito yung lion, giraffe, elephant, kepo, cheetah, mas na maraming hayop ang makikita niyo. Ito na nga kami sa sa loob at nakapila. And okay lang siya. Hindi siya mainit kasi may may atip siya. So kahit mahaba yung pila, hindi ka maiinitan. Magdala ka lang ng tubig at pamay pa pagpunta ka dito sa Disney. Kasi ang mahal ng ang mahal ng tubig dito. Isang bote na sa $4 mahigit. So, magdala na lang kayo ng sarili yung tubig para ipipid eh. At dito banda sa may uh, dito nga banda sa may safari hindi ka masyadong may inita kasi puro marami siyang puno kaya mainit pa rin pero hindi yung talagang bonggang init na grabe yung pawis mo. Kasi malamig-lamig yung hangin dahil maraming puno. And ito nga, ang dami namin nakapila ngayon dahil ang waiting time is 30 minutes. Pero malapit na kami. So, ito pakita ko sa inyo maya. Hello! So, dito pa rin kami sa pilahan. Pero pag facing face, nakita niya baka tingan. Gagamitin niya para sa pilihan ang pag facing face. Ito pa rin malapit na kami sa aming tagpo ang kung saan kami sa surprise. So, mamaya, ano siya, malaking truck, tapos may harang lang siya sa gilid. So, yun ang aming surprise. Pero, maano mo talaga yung mga hayop na malapitan sa'yo, mga gira, mga libra, makikita mo ng malapitan. Basta, ipapakita sa inyo na para malaman mo pag malapit na tayo sa katotohanan mga gira. Okay, so habang mag-aantay ka dito, may makikita rin pala kayong ibon dyan. And, ano bang pangalan ng ibon na yan? Yan, naglalaro siya o. Tingnan mo. May kalaruan siya. <laughs> Dalawa sila. Babae siguro. Gusto niyang asawahin. <laughs> Yun lang ha. Hindi ko alam anong pangalan ng ibon dahil nakat baliktad yung nakalagay na karatula kung anong pangalan yan mga beso hindi natin alam at may parong siya beso o talon siya ng talon excited siguro siya pero ayaw ng babae ayaw niya ako siya mga ay ayaw talaga o nagpapahabol siya tingnan mo yung parong niya tumatayo lahat excited siya So, yan pala mga bes, yung aming sasakyan mamaya, paikot, paikot doon sa pupunta namin sa mga hayop, mag-ikot kami. Yan yung truck na aming sasakyan. Open lang siya, pero safe yan. Safe na safe. Dahil may mga harap yung mga bes. Baka na yan eh, pang lubak-lubak. Kasi mga daanan namin mamaya, mga bes, malubak siya, mabato-bato. Tutuloy tayo sa ating pila. 
And dito nga kami sa may silong uh, kasi kahit yan mong madilim siya o. Kasi may atik yan. So hindi mainit kahit matagal ka magpila. So yan ang aming sasakyan. Malapit na kami. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dito na kami mga bro. Malapit na tayo sa sakayan. Isang ikot na lang to. And dyan tayo mamaya pipila. Sasabihin niya kasi tinatanong niya kung ilan kayo. Tapos ituturo niya kung saan kang line. Nakita yung mga diamond diamond na yan na square. Yung mga yan, yung pula sa hake. Turo niya yan dyan kung saan kayo. Kung ilang, kasi kung ilang kayo doon niya kayo labay. Parang may bilang. So, malapit na kami. Nakain na kami. Dito ako sa gilid para makita niyo mamaya yung mga hayo. Ang problema lang ha, pag may hayo sa kabila, is hindi ko makikita. So dito lang kayo sa side of my head. So let's go! Jumbo everyone, hello! My name is Shannon. I'm going to be your safari guide out here on Kilimanjaro Safari today. Right above your head is a safari spotting guide. It'll help you spot and identify some of the animals we may see on the reserve. We may not see them all depending on different sleeping patterns or migratory patterns those animals might have, but we do get pretty lucky. Now I do ask that everyone remain seated at all times with so your hands, arms, legs, feet inside the vehicle at all times. We are going to go through rough brush and there will be bushes near us with very long thorns. That being said, if you do have any little ones sitting on your lap, perfectly a-okay. Probably the best place for them so they can see the animals better. I just ask that they do remain seated on your lap for the entire duration of our exploration through the reserve. I'd much rather not see them lifted into the air like a baby lion or standing on top of your lap. And if you have any loose objects you hold near and dear to your heart, like Mickey ears, ball caps, sunglasses, eyeglasses, cell phones, cameras, you might want to keep a tight hold on them. If they fly overboard, I can't stop to pick them up for you. I will notify someone something's been dropped. You may get it back at a later time. Sir, during that time, get comfy, get excited, because we are going to see some really amazing animals out here that are few and far between nowadays because of a lot of threats they're facing out in the wild. So it's really cool to be able to get up close and personal with them and see what they're all about. All right, it does look like we have the all clear to enter the reserve. So window. Our first stop on the reserve will be a forest called Little Aturi Forest. A lot of the animals out here have natural camouflage, so they will blend in with the rocks, trees, bushes around them. That's their first line of defense against predators. Off to the right by a leaning tree, you'll be able to see the south end of an okapi. They do have those stripes on their legs that help mimic the streaming of light through a tree canopy. You might notice a small brown animal beyond it there in the bushes as well, and that's a yellowback diker. Largest of the 17 diker species, dikers africans for diver, they dive into the bushes to escape predators hiding there. Now the okapi, they do have striped relatives of the giraffe though, the only living relative of the giraffe. They do have similar bone skull structure just on a smaller scale and since they're so reclusive, solitary, they were thought to be a myth for the longest time, especially because of their interesting dressing. Those are saddle billed storks named after the saddle shaped shield on top of their bills. They do mate for life, so perhaps they're a mated pair. And beyond the water here, off to the left, you'll be able to see a black rhino roaming around. So black rhinos get around 3,000 pounds in weight. Best way to identify them is by their mouth. They have a very narrow mouth, and their upper lip is pointed and prehensile. It moves and acts like a finger to help group leaves off of bushes and trees. Pretty useful since they live... Unfortunately, there are less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the entire world. And that is a decreasing number still. They are still being poached out in the wild for their horns that are made of keratin. That's the same material found in your hair and your nails. Some people believe it has an extra medicinal property to it if it comes from a rhino. Science has proven this is not the case, though. Oh, it looks like there's some interesting antelope up the crest of the hill here off to the left as well. Those are bongos, frequently called ghosts of the forest. They do have horns that lean back and curve to help them travel through the thicket of a forest so they don't have to slow down. A cousin of theirs is among them as well. It's a tall, sandy-colored antelope that's way more invisible. A greater kudu. Second tall antelope you'll see on the reserve gets around five feet tall the shoulder and the few that I see out there are females. The males will have horns that get around six feet long. Ways for trying to help prevent this from happening though. One big one is bringing awareness towards your situation since they are facing a dramatic number of losses from poaching. Also habitat loss. So by being really proactive with what we recycle and reducing the use of single-use materials, we can really help combat that habitat loss and the pollutions they face sometimes near the rivers here like Safi River. And that can even affect the Nile hippopotamus resting on shore coming up on our right. So the Nile hippopotamus gets around 5,000 pounds in weight. They'll spend a majority of their time in the water to stay cool, so it's nice to see one resting on shore every once in a while. 
They do very well for themselves in the water too. They can hold their breath around eight minutes at a time along the bottom of the river to travel around. Hence the name hippopotamus. When translated to English, it means the river horse. Not actually related to horses though. Their closest living relatives are the porpoise and whale. They are very, very cute animals too, but I will say they're the most dangerous animal in Africa. Very aggressive and territorial. They can outrun a human on land, running around 35 miles per hour. So definitely animals you want to admire from afar, but admire nonetheless. Further on we go, really cool animals coming up on our left here in the distance as well, some Nile crocodiles. They get around 16 feet long, can weigh around 500 pounds, and that's just an average, they can get much larger. Since they're inactive animals, they don't have to hunt too often, but when they do, they can eat up to half their body weight food, which will mainly be a lot of fish. He's opening up, so we're headed out of the forest and into a savanna ecosystem. A lot of cool plants and animals out this way. A lot of them you'll most likely recognize. Pretty interesting tree coming up on our right. You may have seen a few today. This is a baobab tree. Locals like to call it the upside down tree since its branches will look like roots. It tends to be leafless around nine months out of the year, which helps it to retain the water it holds in its trunk that animals will drink during times of drought. So it goes by a nickname you might know better as the tree of life. Further on we go, getting towards a really beautiful overlook of the savanna. You may notice it's a little bit more open and flat out this way compared to a forest. It is a grasslands ecosystem after all, so there will be fewer places to hide. Animals here, therefore, rely very heavily on agility and mobility to survive, more so than their camouflage. We'll most likely find some pretty good examples of that out here at one point or another. It is a natural highway of Africa as well. So animals will be coming and going all the time as they travel on through to perhaps their next watering hole or favorite place to eat. So you may notice the shorter grasses across the savanna here. That's not actually caused by someone coming out here and mowing, but because of all the short hoofed animals that are continuously grazing along the ground, keeping it nice and short and fertilizing that ground as they travel. So when they come back at a later date, there will be new, fresh, nutritious grass for them to eat. Looks like there is a pack of African wild dogs roaming around here. So African wild dogs are also called painted dogs because of their beautiful coat pattern. Dog is in their name and they are part of the canid family, but they are more closely related to the fox. They chirp instead of bark and will have four toes instead of five like a dog would. Try to stay seated for me though, please. Thank you so much. They are the most successful pack hunters in Africa. More successful. We're going to see a couple different animals here. Those stable antelope resting in the shade have those horns for self-defense, not predators right off their back. And this giraffe a little bit closer. Now giraffes, they're not too bad of an example of agility just because they can run around 35 miles per hour, even, they are, even though they are the tallest land animal in the entire world getting up to 20 feet tall. That one's a Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffes have very jagged, irregular patches. One of seven subspecies out here in Africa. And if there's one, there may be more, so keep an eye out as we travel around. It's not too uncommon to see giraffes around here because the trees we're traveling among are their favorite snack. These are acacia trees. They love the freshest, newest leaves off of them. They'll eat the low-hanging branches. So that's why they look so neatly trendy. They don't actually grow that way because of all the giraffes that are consistently eating on them. So we'll see if we find them more moving around. See some movement up the hill to the left, actually. Looks like there's an antelope there. A little difficult to see, though. Kind of the point in hiding in tall grasses. So maybe we'll see it at a later point in time. It's actually Patterson's Zealand. Heading a little bit further through the savannah, maybe we'll meet up back up with it later. The closer to it, way more visible are quite a few shorter hooked animals. So coming up on the right, we're going to see some small antelope or good safari guide. But the springbok, they can jump six feet into the air and 13 feet forward. So when they jump, it's called pronking. It helps scare predators away. If it doesn't work, though, they can also reach speeds up to 50 miles per hour. Five zero. So they're one of the top 10 fastest animals in the world. Second only on land to the cheetah, really. Some animals with beautiful horns coming up here on the right as well. And coley cattle. And coley cattle are the only domesticated animals you'll see on the reserve. First domesticated by the Watusi tribe, so also called Watusi cattle. Their horns get around six feet long. We'll see them a little bit later on. It looks like there's a Patterson's Zealand in the road up ahead. Actually a baby, so... We'll go at a little bit of a slower pace. 
Even though an inquiry cattle's horns look so big, they're not too heavy. They're slightly hollow inside with a honeycomb infrastructure and a lot of blood vessels. So when the blood pumps through the horns, it cools down, pumps back into the bodies, help them stay cool during hot days. So off to the left, we'll see these Patterson Zealand. Now, younger Patterson Zealand have brown, a lighter brown color to them and more prominent stripes to help them blend in with those tall grasses better. Once they're full grown, they get around six feet tall, weigh around 2,000 pounds, about the weight of a decent sized giraffe, and they can leap eight feet into the air from a standing position. That's about eye level with us. The wildebeest off to our right, pretty tough. They can go up to five days without drinking water, and their babies will be up and running within 15 minutes of being born. And they love hanging out with giraffes, since they have a better vantage point to look for predators. A little bit of, since it looks larger than the few we saw earlier. We'll see this giraffe to the right too. So giraffes can have pretty impressive necks. Surprisingly enough, they have the same number of bones in their neck as a human's neck. Only seven. Just gets a little bit larger than our own. Those tongues are really cool. Fully prehensile, use like a hand. It's around 18 inches long. So if you were a giraffe, your tongue would most likely be the length from your elbow to your wrist, anyone of any age. Quite a few of them roaming around here, even one off to the left. Heading forward, we will be getting towards Timbo Country. We'll congregate at, you can kind of see it here off to the right as we round the bend too. So we'll see if we can get a little bit closer. The reason they go over towards the red clay is because they do eat red clay, and I know that sounds gross, but it's really, really smart because gives them a lot of nutrients they need, like iron, magnesium, other vitamins and minerals that are pretty essential to their diet. They're, of course, not the only mammals to look for supplements in their diet. Even we humans do. We just don't go straight to the source for soil. But usually we can find pretty good signs of them out here, even if they're not too close by, since they use their tusks to gouge out the dirt, loosen it up, and eat it. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer here. If there was one, there might be more. Males are very solitary, so that could have been a male we saw. And there's one off to the left, it seems. Two of them. So a herd will range around two to 20 elephants at a time. They will be led by a matriarch, wisest oldest female. Their lifespan out in the wild will be around 60 years. Very intelligent animals too. They pass down knowledge throughout their generations. And those ears are a really good way to identify them. Their ears get much larger than an Asian elephant. Kind of look like the continent of Africa in shape sometimes. So one there, one a little bit further out as well. Their trunks are really impressive too. They have more muscles than the human body and their trunks alone. They have those two tips that are very finger-like. It makes them really agile and strong. Can pick up a single blade of grass or very around a tree trunk depending on the size of the elephant. So they're traveling on through, maybe meeting up with the rest of their herd or, or perhaps they're just going towards the next watering hole. Now on average, a full-grown elephant eats around 300 pounds of food per day, and they also drink around 42 gallons of water per day. Not too difficult for them, as long as there's a source of those types of foods available for them. Their trunks will help them retain food and water, because they can hold around 5 gallons of water in their trunk at a time. Coming up, we'll see some greater flamingos. These are the lightest pink of all the flamingos. They get that color from eating a lot of shrimp. And they are the largest as well. They can get around five feet tall. So a group of them can be called quite a few things. You can call them a flock, a stand, a colony, or a flamboyant. Quickly visit these mud wallows coming up on the left here and roll around in that mud. It helps them to stay cool. It's a natural sunscreen and bug repellent. So if we find any, most likely they'll be southern white rhinos. There are around 20,000 of them left in the world, which is a really good number for rhinos. It will say it's a declining number, so they are labeled as daily threatened. It just means we have to keep a close eye on them and try to protect them as much as possible. The further away from elephant country we get, the easier it sometimes is to find large predators, especially big cats. So keep an eye out, especially to the left here. All that nice shade in the distance could be a big cat roaming around. Just like that cheetah. I see a cheetah coming up. 
about 10, 11 o'clock on our left between a clearing of some trees. Laying down currently. So see if you can find it. Cheetahs are the fastest animals on land in the entire world. They can run around 60 miles per hour. And it has been recorded that they can run 0 to 60 within 3 seconds. But a group of them will be called a coalition. Maybe one of those black tear tracks that run down their face help prevent sun glare. Spots are pretty useful too. One of the few big cats that hunts during the day. So camouflage is very important. And heading forward, getting towards some Kofi rock formations, home to a pride of lions. And we'll see a lioness and a male lion resting together here to the left. So lions are nocturnal, believe it or not. They're a little bit more active at night. During the day, they rest around 16 to 20 hours. Not always sleeping, as you can tell, but they're definitely conserving as much energy as possible. They're active at night for a number of reasons. It's a little bit cooler. They do overheat easily. Also, their eyesight will be six times more powerful than a human's at night. Their large paws are thickly padded, which helps them walk silently along the ground to be able to sneak up on their prey under the cover of darkness. Yeah, we'll see those white rhinos a little bit later on here as we round the bend. I'm going to get a nice view of this lioness before we head away. <laughs> so usually within a pride the lioness do a majority of the hunting. A couple of reasons for this. They do have a more sleek figure. So they can use stealth better. Also there's more of them. They use a lot of teamwork to catch their prey. That'll raise their success rate, which it brings up the health of the pride quite a bit. The male hangs back, protects the territory, and usually the young cubs of a pride as well. Now further on, we'll get a little bit closer to these white rhinos now. Really impressive animals. Not named after the color, that is a mistranslation. All rhinos are the same gray color. They get their name from the Afrikaans word vite. Vite means wide because they have a wide flat mouth that will help them graze along the ground. Beyond them too are some water buck. They're really adorable. They have heart-shaped noses, doe eyes, and white rings on their bottoms. And the white rings help their babies to identify and follow them without getting lost. Especially at night, they gleam in the moonlight with an aid of an oil they secrete. Coach of the unicorn. <laughs> and then there's some Bontabak further out with another waterbuck to our right, too. And Bontabak, their name translated to English means colorful antelope because their coats gleam a beautiful purplish red. Those are ostrich eggs. Probably some females not too far away. Those eggs, they'll be up. They're usually pretty quiet out this way. Pretty lush, but it's a newer expansion to the reserve. Not a lot of animals have set migratory patterns here yet. We just wanted to add more land that would definitely be protected from habitat loss and poaching. Now, unfortunately, poaching will still be a prevalent issue on lands like this reserve, but there will be a lot more wardens here that will have the ability to watch over and protect these animals more so than just out in the wilderness. And it brings a lot of commerce into certain regions in Africa that can help support those animals too. All right, everyone, it does look like our journey is coming very close to a close here on Harambe Wildlife Reserve, so we're headed back towards Harambe Village. So I would like to say thank you, and the Swahili phrase for thank you is Asante Sana. So Asante Sana, everyone, for joining me out here today. Asante Sana! Asante Sana. Uh, if you ever get the chance, definitely come visit us again sometime. No two safaris are ever alike. The animals certainly make sure that you never know where they're going to be, what they're going to be up to. Sometimes that, it does depend on the time of day you visit as well. Earlier in the morning and later in the evenings, you'll have a higher chance of being able to see nocturnal animals be more active. So the lions we saw, the Nile hippopotamus, and every once in a while you get to see a spotted hyena or two, and that's really cool. It does look like we're getting really close to the warden's post now. So you may want to double check your rows, just make sure you have all your valuables. It's a pretty bumpy ride, so sometimes things fall out of pockets. And it's usually quite the travel back to Africa if something's forgotten. And if you do... So yun, tapos na kami sa safari, and maganda siya kasi ano. Yung mga nakikita mo lang na hayop sa national, national geographic. Makikita mo siya ng malapitan. So punta kayo dito sa safari. Lagi namin siya ang pinupuntahan pag dito kami sa Animal Kingdom. Ang ride niya mga 30 minutes siguro. Yung nagpapatagal lang yung pila. So, hindi mo lang makita sa TV yung 
mga giraffe. Makikita mo na siya ng persona. So ngayon, lilipat na kami and pupunta kami ngayon sa show. Yung pupunta namin show, wait lang, silaw. Is yung Lion King show. So doon kami pupunta, sunod na palabas. So ipapakita ko sa inyo kung anong meron doon. So, bye!